Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Hi, Mikey G. It is Saturday, September 24th. This week's episode is sponsored by Recurrent. More information during the break. According to a new job listing for the Tesla robot program, Tesla is planning to have, quote, thousands of humanoid robots within its factories. Now, during a production roadmap early in 2022, Elon Musk said that Tesla is prioritizing product development of the Optimus robot in 2022 over other new product launches, which have been delayed until next year. But now in a hiring effort, the job listing for motion planning and navigation Tesla bot writes that Tesla plans to use thousands of them in the factories. The company said that the first version of the Tesla bot will be focusing on completing simple repetitive tasks, which will make the robot useful in a factory setting. If Tesla can successfully create the humanoid robot that is useful, the benefits are obvious, especially amid the current labor shortage. Stay tuned for my opinion on the Tesla robots. Tesla has started sending out invitations for the AI Day 2022, and the automaker is teasing more information on important programs. They wrote in the invite, quote, You'll learn about Tesla's latest developments in artificial intelligence, including full self-driving, Tesla bot, Dojo, and more. Now, Musk had previously framed the AI Day event as a recruiting tool for Tesla, but with the anticipated arrival of the robot, it's becoming a platform for new product development and announcements. If Tesla has a working prototype of the robot, it wouldn't be too surprising if they started taking orders at the event. Tesla watchers will be paying special attention to the progress on Tesla's full self-driving efforts, as Tesla has made a deadline that has been moved up many times already. Last year, Tesla unveiled the Dojo supercomputer at the event, And at the time, Tesla only had a working chip and tile. But now, they have been expected to unveil an actual supercomputer cluster based on that Dojo technology. Things are growing, if not for the consumer side. Rivian's network of DC fast charging stations, called the Rivian Adventure Network, is slowly but surely expanding with a new station this week. While most automakers are producing electric vehicles to rely on third-party charging network operators, Rivian decided to build their own network, actually two networks. The first is a DC fast charging network called the Rivian Adventure Network. It's the equivalent of Tesla's superchargers. The second is Rivian's Waypoint Network. It's similar at level two destination chargers, and that's primarily what a lot of people are focusing on. But the actual network is something that's quite anticipated. The Waypoint chargers will be at strategic outdoor destinations, such as off-road trailheads. Rivian announced the Adventure Network with 600 locations planned more than a year ago. However, the first locations opened up just last June. As of now, the sixth station is opened with five in California and one in Colorado. While it might not seem like a big step all by itself, it could become a new standard for outdoor adventures. This week's Quick Charge is sponsored by Recurrent Auto. Recurrent lets you check the battery before buying a used EV and monitor your battery's performance with monthly insights using its free battery reports for EV owners. And the new range score tool by Recurrent is like an odometer for EVs. It tells you at a glance how far a used EV can go compared to when it was new. It's especially helpful for people who are new to EVs and don't always know about the questions to ask about range and degradation. Surveys and early results have found that buyers pay more for cars with range scores even if it's not in perfect condition, anything is better than nothing. And substantially more for cars with really good range scores. For EV owners thinking about selling in the next 12 months, like those waiting on pre-orders for a hot new EV, Recurrent offers a free EV-specific valuation from Black Book that owners can use to sell their EVs at a premium when ready. It's only available in the U.S. and at the moment for most Tesla, Chevrolet, and Nissan EV models. You can head over to recurrentauto.com sell for more information and to get your free reports now. Electrek takes a look at the charging network called Adventure Network from Rivian. And we also take a look at their competitor called the Adventure Network from Jeep. To catch you up to speed, Rivian announced their Adventure Network chargers in June of 2020. And then some months later, Jeep announced their own Adventure Network. To cut to the chase, the Jeep network really hasn't even started yet, and Jeep's plans are much smaller as of right now. Jeep, or the parent company of Stellantis, aren't building their own network exclusively, but rather they're partnering with Electrify America to build special stations. Jeep has announced plans for 18 locations with level 2 chargers and a maximum output of 3.5 kilowatts. 
and those will be located at trails. Rivian, on the other hand, has planned 3,500 chargers at over 200 kilowatts of charging, and they're located at trails, parks, and along popular routes to get there. Again, these are the current plans, and it may very well change, but on paper, the Rivian Adventure Network is vastly larger, faster, and more useful compared to the one that's been announced by Jeep. The more you know, huh? General Motors has announced that it will be investing $760 million into its Toledo, Ohio plant as it gets the facility ready for the electric revolution. The automaker has been active these past few months as it gears up for what's expected to be a massive transition. General Motors' 2.8 million square foot facility in Toledo currently manufactures transmissions, but now the plant will be the automaker's first U.S. powertrain facility to convert to producing electric vehicle related products. The plant has about 1,500 employees right now, yet General Motors says that the investment will bring employees along in the company's EV transformation. Constructed is slated to begin this month. Drive Electric Week kicks off today with nearly 300 online and in-person events celebrating electric vehicles. Events will be held for the next two weekends from September 23rd through October 2nd in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Drive Electric Week is an annual event organized by Plug-in America, Electric Auto Association, EV Hybrid Noir, and Sierra Club. Surprisingly, this is the year's 12th year. No, this is the event's 12th year. <laughs> My first year was in 2012, but it was a little later that I attended the show and got to actually showcase my rebuilt city car to a handful of very dedicated conversion enthusiasts here in Utah. Since then, the event has grown quite significantly. On our website, you can find an interactive map with events happening near you. But if you are like our loyal viewer, Martin Woods, who lives across the pond, there are also virtual events, such as seminars, interviews with experts discussing various aspects of EVs, and even a virtual test drive of cars. Can't wait to see that one. Although they might be happening in the middle of the night, if you're in the UK, but at any rate, you can check out our website for full details. Okay, it is opinion time. Here's my take on the Tesla robots. Of course, right now there isn't much to discuss in practical terms because the first prototype is not yet moving, so this is largely speculation and postulating on the future. So here I go. I'm going to venture a guess that having a labor force of humanoid robots, such as the ones depicted in science fiction or the ones that Elon Musk has been talking about replacing human labor in factories, and also making enough of an impact that basic human income may be necessary from humans becoming mechanically replaced, I think that that is quite far into the future. Like, really far. I know that Tesla already implements robots to perform manufacturing, and I know that robots run to and fro transporting goods in a warehouse. But my reservation comes at the idea that a robot will have to navigate the human world. Elon Musk made a point to say that the robot should have human characteristics since it would have to exist in a world that has been shaped for humans. That makes total sense. However, the Tesla software that is being tested for so-called self-driving is very far from the original timeline that was set by Elon Musk, and the goalpost keeps getting pushed further. Compared to a human, a car drives on a very even terrain, they have literally no balance issues with cargo, and there are signs and markers all along the road to give them directions as to how to behave. And cars don't have to interact with human voices, expressions, or languages. And there are a thousand other things that would interrupt a human robot on the way to pick up apples at the grocery store. I'm sure that the Tesla robot team has sub-teams that are working on each of these obstacles, but personally I'm not getting my hopes up for quite a long time, even if I really want to. Elon Musk said a long time ago that there is a huge gap between making a first prototype electric car and then actually getting that towards mass production. While he is absolutely right, he learned that uh, being guilty of underestimating the challenge himself. But, you know, he and the team rose to the challenge, beat the odds, and I think they can do it again. However, Musk also said that Tesla vehicles are basically a robot on wheels. And I wonder if he is underestimating the gap between a car on the road and a human at work in the real world. But what do you think? You can let me know in the comment section on YouTube. In today's community comment section found on YouTube, I was bolstered by the comments that many of you made appreciating minivans. I think that could be the next low-hanging fruit for EV designs. David had mentioned that companies Arrival and Canoe could be making a minivan. I think it will be a while for Canoe because they're currently making a van for Walmart, trying to keep themselves afloat and also an MPV prototype in the works. 
A channel called Dharma Rascals wants a Tesla minivan, but they resign their fate saying, oh well. And I agree. I think that oh well is correct. I don't see Tesla making a minivan for quite a long time. Thanks for your comments. And thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.